I want you to think of all of the challenges that our world is facing nowadays. As you're all aware, unfortunately, we have to deal with many very complex problems. Let's, for example, consider the problem of climate change. With climate change, we don't just have to deal with the severe weather events and all of the other issues that come with it, but we also have to deal with biodiversity loss, with energy security, geopolitics, supply chain man management, displacement, migration, and many, many more issues. And in order to solve these types of issues, we need experts. We need experts to come together and actually discuss and deliberate about these issues. So let's invite a panel of experts and observe how they would communicate. Given a particular aspect of climate change, our experts can start deliberating, sharing knowledge, sharing data, sharing simulations, and actually discussing multiple different phenomena related to that specific aspect. They might use many different communication mediums and communication strategies to bring along their message. For example, they might be using slides, as I'm using right now, or they would be using a whiteboard, or verbal and non-verbal communication means. So, in general, human-human communication is usually very efficient and very flexible as well. However, nowadays, as you've seen already, we have multiple AIs that can be specialized in particular domains and actually can have a specific thing to contribute to the problem solving. So what happens if we replace our human experts with AIs? What if we want to have these AIs communicate? So if we think about having an AI-based system, you'll find that we probably will design a distributed system where we have different specialized agents, with every agent having a clearly defined interface to a centralized system that orchestrates how they communicate to each other. Clearly, AI-AI communication is not based on social interaction. But our human experts also have a lot to contribute to that discussion. So what happens if we want to harness the expertise of both humans and AIs? What happens if we want to team up humans and AIs? So if we do not tailor how the AIs are actually communicating, and we do not train the humans to, to interact with these AIs, we most likely will result with a lot of confusion and miscommunication. And as a computer scientist, I've been asking myself for many, many years, how do we overcome these issues? In particular, one of the main research questions that I day-to-day -day work on is how do we team up humans and AIs in order to do efficient, data-driven problem-solving and decision-making? So in order to understand this whole complex problem space, let's first consider what each of these agents can contribute to the problem solving. What are the strengths and weaknesses of each of these agents? Let's draw a spectrum from human to artificial intelligence. You'll find that AIs can outperform humans when it comes to scalable computing and when it comes to structured analysis but humans are much better when it comes to deriving and connecting knowledge based on their semantic understanding and common sense. So for a problem such as climate change, there will be challenges where we might completely want to rely on fully manual analysis. And there will be other challenges that we can completely automate. But there is a wide range of challenges where we require the expertise of both the humans and the AIs. And this is the exact place where we want both of these agents to interact. If these agents both equally contribute to the problem solving, then we have a situation that we call a mixed initiative analysis. Both of the agents have the equal initiative. If we want to do automated analysis and only consult the humans, um, when, it, when we need their expertise, we have a human-in-the-loop analysis. And if we want to do a manual analysis and only consult the AIs when we need them, we have a, an AI-in-the-loop analysis. 
This whole collaborative human-AI interaction for efficient problem-solving and decision-making is exactly what we refer to as intelligence augmentation. The main principle that we follow here is to find situations where we need both of these agents' expertise and to actually figure out where we can use minimal feedback for maximal gain. So we need to answer the question, how do these two agents communicate? And my answer to that is through designing tailored visual, verbal, and interactive interfaces. So how do we design these interfaces? One of the core concepts that we use is called co-adaptive analytics. It's where humans and AIs evolve their knowledge over time. So we might have the AIs teach the human and the human learns from the AI. Or we might have the human teach the AI and the AI learns from the human. So in order to tackle this kind of problem, we design very specific systems. And let me show you one example that we design to investigate climate change in debates. And for that, I brought with me my friend Arjun. He's a political scientist, and he's interested in knowing how people discuss the topic of climate change in different public discourse. And he's particularly interested in modeling these topics in order to investigate whether there are arguments that are shared among different types of analysis and uh, debates. So to help analyze this, we came up with this interface. We observe all of the documents. These are snippets of the discussion that are coming in over time. Model them in a hierarchical topic model where we actually try to segment the documents into different snippets that belong to the same topic. We can observe how these topics evolved over time during the discussion. And then we have our AI agents. They are on the bottom, represented by these cards, and they give us different suggestions on how to improve on that topic modeling. So during the analysis of the debate, they make suggestions that the users can investigate in order to look at different types of topic modeling results. The AI agents are represented as cards, and these cards have both visual and verbal explanations of the suggestion. And they allow humans to observe what would happen if we accept one of these suggestions and give feedback to the AI whether the suggestion was good or bad. And our goal here for the AI agents is to let them learn when to provide useful suggestions so that they find the situations when it's really needed. So now, let's dive right in where the system is actually analyzing a debate between Romney and Obama in 2012, where they had their uh, presidential debate face off. So here we have the documents coming in, and then we have a first suggestion coming in from an agent. We can look at the suggestion and observe what it would do if we accepted it. It would actually suggest a new topic, and then based on that, we can observe what are the documents that this uh, AI agent has used in order to make that suggestion. We can accept the suggestion if we want, and then move on, and you'll see another agent actually making a different suggestion. We can dive deeper into the analysis and look at all sorts of parameters if we want to, and then accept or reject the suggestion. And if there are particular suggestions that we don't like at all, and we don't interact with them, they actually decay over time. They will lose confidence because we didn't interact with them. And then, based on that, we can start actually modeling a topic such as climate change. And we can observe things like when did uh, the debaters here mention topics like energy, oil, gas, and other topics related to climate change. So this allows us to actually interact with AI, give it feedback, refine the AI, without having to write a single line of code. So this is uh, one interface that we developed for this interactive and explainable topic model refinement. But it's not the only one. It's actually one of many that we've developed over the years. I've been on a quest to try to find out what are the best strategies for human AI interaction? How do we efficiently let them solve together a particular issue? 
And based on the results of these models, we can actually literally pull apart a conversation, disentangle all of its threats, and take a look at what different people have shared when they discuss a specific debate. We don't do that with only presidential debates, but what you see here is actually a Reddit thread, where we look at online participants in a discussion forum. And we then can dive deeper and see the different documents and arguments that people have shared, and whether a particular argument gained a lot of support or a lot of traction in the analysis. For this Reddit thread, one of the findings that we had is that one of the most convincing arguments with respect to climate change that was that researchers have found out that CO2 levels are significantly higher than the ones trapped in 800,000-year-old ice cores. So this is a way to facilitate intelligence augmentation. But let me show you what is the main innovation of this research. Normal intelligence augmentation would look something like this. We would have a linear workflow where we start with the data, let the models analyze it, and get feedback from the human based on the output. But what we research are alternative workflows. For example, by training more than just one model and looking how they would result in different um, suggestions or different outputs, and we let these models compete for the satisfaction of the user. Because by doing so, we allow humans to give us uh, comparative feedback instead of absolute feedback. Humans are much better at answering the question, do you think this model is better than this one? Instead of answering the question, do you think this model is good on a scale from 1 to 10? So this type of workflow is something that we innovate in order to facilitate the interaction. Another type of workflow is where we interact with experts and observe how they would approach a problem before trying to model it. In this particular case, the user teaches the AI and the AI learns from the user. So let me come back to the original question of how to avoid miscommunication. And my answer to that is that we need to adapt the analysis and the guidance over time because both the AI and the human evolve their knowledge. We need to tailor the design of our interaction workflows, as I just showed you. We need to combine different explanation mediums, such as verbal and visual explanations, because the redundancy makes the explanation much more clear. And we need to pick the right metaphors. One of the examples that we like to use is to call our AIs minions, because that uses a lot less jargon and it's less scary. <laughs> so in my research, I have um, developed a lot of systems that allow for an effective and empowering human AI communication to facilitate collaboration. One of the most crucial aspects, however, is to consider who we are designing the system for. Who are our stakeholders, our users? And based on that, we try to answer two very important questions. How much do these persons know about AI? And how much do they know about the domain where we're applying the AI? And based on that, we go on different quests, developing a lot of different systems. So let me show you a couple of examples based on different types of stakeholders. Here is a system that we developed at the beginning of the pandemic that is tailored for the general public. It uses a lot of simple explanations to allow the general public to uh, monitor COVID and hospitalization numbers and make informed decisions. Here is another system that we tailor for music analysts. And this interface allows us to augment the music sheets and allow the experts to analyze the music on multiple different levels. Here is an interface for machine learning developers, and it allows us to take a deep dive into neural network architectures. And here is one for medical doctors, and it actually informs the doctors when the AI is trying to cheat, when it's taking a shortcut, when it's analyzing and classifying images for medical diagnosis. And lastly, here is a system that we develop for computational linguists to inform them what language models have actually understood about language. This and many more of these interfaces are available on my websites as demos, so you're welcome to try them out and also give me feedback. 
So let me conclude by saying that I personally think that it's very powerful and important to team up humans and AIs. Because together, they can solve much more challenging questions and challenges more than each of them by themselves. I'm very optimistic that through this research, we can actually progress towards a future where we have a seamless human AI communication. Thank you.